Good, okay. So that's, the, that's one piece of the story. What we're going to do is let's talk about the second piece of the story now. And for that, we need a new stance. The stance I want to use is a derivative of Zen Kutsudach. So from here, everybody make forward stance. What I want you to do is I want you to pull your foot one foot length back. Turn your rear foot in. So it's either straight ahead, right, or preferably just straight ahead. Turn your front foot so it's about 15 degrees in. So see this blue line? See how the outside edge of my foot is running along this blue line? All I want you to do is turn it so it's about 15 degrees in. So here my foot's pointing in this direction, but just slightly, right? The outside edge is pointing straight ahead to you. I turn it 15 degrees, and then I let my knee push forward. Then from here, what I want you to do is, this is in the upper hip, what I want you to do here is I assume that position and then I just bend my knees as far as I can over my toes and then all I do is I squeeze my butt in, like so. And what you notice, what happens is that my weight shifts onto the balls of both feet, the inside edges. Do you notice that? Right, so it's here. I make Zen Kutsudachi, I pull it back turn my back foot in, turn my front foot in slightly, bend my knees so they naturally track over my toes, and then squeeze in this feeling here. This stance is called Hangetsu Dutch, right? All of you know it, I think, but this is the way to do it. You see some people do it pulling their knees in, no. Just bend your knees so they track naturally over your toe and make the bend from your upper hip down to the ball of your foot and just squeeze, just squeeze like so. So as I squeeze and bring my hip up, my weight will naturally transfer onto the balls of my feet. From here, the next thing I want you to do, and the thing you'll notice with this stance, is as soon as you sort of sunk and then squeezed in, everything became exceptionally stable. Right, you sort of sunk into the floor and it's an exceptionally stable stance. Now from here, maintain this feeling in your center, keep squeezing your butt, Release your front foot, so it's pointing straight ahead, then simply step forward into that same position, then squeeze. Good. Now release the front foot, keep the tension here, and then step through, squeeze. Release the front foot, right, then step through, squeeze. This is stepping forward in Hangetsu Dachi. Does that make sense? As I step, it ends up going, if my Zenkut Dachi is this long, I bring it back, I'm simply stepping forward, there's about, yeah, about a foot for my shoulder width, about this much distance, front to back between my toe and my heel. And as I go, I simply release the front foot, click, that releases the front, allows me to step through, and then put the weight on the front, Make sure the weight's on the back and squeeze. Boom. Then let it go. Step, squeeze. Let it go. Step, squeeze. Does that make sense? This is Hangetsu Dachi. What Hangetsu Dachi does for you is it allows you to be more stable on a slippery surface. So Zenkutsu Dachi, if you've ever done it on a slippery floor, your feet go one way, go the other, oh, you're all over the place. Hangetsu Dachi, you're like, oh, there, I'm grabbed. So it's Zenkutsu Dachi's forward stance, but gripped inward rather than pushed outward. Does that make sense? And it gives you the stability, right, the sort of mm, anchoring that you otherwise wouldn't have. The kind of drill that we would do if we're in partners now is I'd have you both stand facing somebody and I'll have you push and pull and try and twist the other off balance, right? As long as you maintain that one heaviness in the hip and the squeeze through the butt, which creates that inside tension, that rolling onto the feet, you ain't gonna move. Does that make sense? That's the idea here. But I have incredibly good hip maneuverability, right? Even within the stance. Does that make sense? Everyone good? So let's step forward with that just a few times. So from here, really, just with your hands on your hips, each step, squeeze through the hip. Then let the front foot go. Each 
step, squeeze. Let the front foot go. Step, squeeze. Let the front foot go. Step, squeeze. Let the front foot go. Step, squeeze. Good. Now, one thing I want you to watch is this. Watch your center body. Watch your, your butt back and forth. So what I don't want you to do is this. Then you let it go. Then you let it go. You know what I mean? Not that. It's subtler. It's tight. It's here. You hear. I release. Now I step through. And you can see. Just whomp. As I connect. I let it go. I step. And I connect. It's very, very subtle. Very small. Just that little bit of a squeeze. Be very aware that you're not each time this kind of stuff. Instead, keep stability here and just let go, step, let go, step, let go, step. Does that make sense? So you're maintaining your posture, your strength of your hips throughout the action. Okay? Try it one more time. Ready? Itch, step. Good. Knee, let it go and step. Sun, let it go and step. She, let it go and step. Gore, let it go and step. Hutch, let it go and step. And relax. So something that you notice, which is very weird, right? One of the differences between Zenkutsu and Hangetsu is that when I'm in Zenkutsu, moving from step to step, my body center doesn't go from left to right. It just simply gets bigger. It simply gets bigger as I drive my center towards you, yeah? With Hangetsu, it, it, it actually slightly, just ever so slightly, relaxes over the leg and then back out. It follows the path. So when you read a lot of books, they talk about Hangetsu as being half moon. That's what it means. I don't think the half moon is about the foot movement. I think rather it's actually the center movement that you create as a result of this. Right? So again, I'm not doing, I'm not over dramatizing it. I'm just simply, as I step at my body weight, I'm allowing my body weight to naturally shift as I maintain that strength from my legs, hips, and groin. Does that make sense? This is how I'm thinking of the stance. Okay, ready? So let's move. A E shout, squeeze. Good. Knee, let it go and step. Sun, let it go and step. She, let it go and step. Gore, let it go and step. Oh, one more. Let it go and step. And relax this feeling. Everyone good? Okay, now let's what I want to do next is let's and as you get better at it, you get smoother at the foot transitions. When you first start, it's gonna be this sort of um, step, and then oh my god, I have to move again. Uh, 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 and then you let oh e, uh, you know it, it, it becomes this. But as you get better at it, you just settle each time. You become a little step, 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 step. You see what I mean? And it happens more and more naturally. It's just time, training, and not letting your center go. And that's the hardest piece about the stance, yeah, is, is that. Right. So from here, this is simply a derivative. Anything that you can do from Zen Kutsudach, you can do from Hangetsu. Okay, so as you make Hangetsu, as you make, the first technique we did was simply Uchuke Gyakuzuki. This time, you're just going to make it straight Gyakuzuki or Uchuke Gyakuzuki in Hangetsu. And you're going to make it real, we'll do it slowly first, but then we'll bring it to real time. So from here, just feeling your body, allow the Uchuke to naturally move the body and allow it to step. So here, the same way that you did get up with eye driving forward, feel here, wrong. Now just feel, oh sorry, here, 
forward into Uchuke now just feel the same action. Does that make sense? So make it smooth. Feel your elbow, hip, knee all move together and out. You see? So I'm not place step. It all just happens together. It all just happens together as you make that drive. Feel the back foot. Now, when you make the gyatsuki, feel hip, body. Don't stop the hip here and then have the hand orphaned. Rather feel all the way through the action Boom, as it goes out. So don't stop moving the hip as it goes. Not, oh, it's kind of impotent. Allow it as it goes. Ready? So let's try. Smooth, no strength. Just think about the legs. Boom, making the stance, making the stance and just let your hands naturally move along the same action. Ready? Itch. Now, knee. Good, enough. Other side. Itch. Knee. Good, enough. Itch. Knee. Enough. Itch. Knee. Enough. Itch. Knee. Enough. Itch. Knee. Enough. Good. So, you know, the block's starting to look good. The second piece is, well, what about the punch, right? When you make Yakuzuki here, is it just this turn like this? Do you turn through the center of your body to punch them? No, right? You slam it like you're slamming the door shut, right? You, slam, you rotate through this axis, door slams. So how do you create that energy? How do you slam the door shut? What do you push off? Your rear leg, right? When I make you chuka and I step forward, when I make that second push, it's this. It's from here, whoom, that makes the drive, not me turning this hip back and pushing off my back leg backwards. It's this leg, whoom, that drives in this, 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 that makes the action. And it's the same in Hangetsu. As you make the Hangetsu, whoop, don't just turn your hip, push, push off your body, push off your body to make the punch. Does that make sense? So really feel that rear leg push to turn the hip, to turn the hip, okay? The same way that you would otherwise, ready? Hey, smooth. Each knee. Good, enough. Other side. Each knee. Good, enough. Each knee. Enough. Check your timing. Mine was goofy in that last one. Each knee. Good, enough. H, knee, good, and up, H, knee, good, and up, and relax. Inner thigh muscles should be hurting a little bit, mine are, well, I'll be walking like a duck tomorrow, okay, allow that, you should be feeling a little bit of that because of the squeeze in, the squeeze in of the muscles. Okay, now quick, quick like a bunny, ready? So from here, make Uchuke then punch. Ready? Itch! Good, enough. Both in Hangetsu. And what you immediately probably noticed, if you did that correctly, notice how strong and stable that felt, didn't it? Right? It was a very different feeling to Zenkuts, which is a sort of expansive whoom whoom. This was solid and compact feeling in the way that the technique worked. Yes? No? Right? It's a different flavor. It's a different feel. Right, so, other leg. Ready? Knee! Good, and up. Other leg. Sun! Good. She! Good. Go! Oh! She! Ha! 
Good, and up. So what we have here is we have this idea of being able to step into our opponent, block and hit. Right? The same flavor. So the same thing that we did before in the basic of driving in and slamming the door, the same thing exists here and here. Right? Okay, so let's move on to the second technique. So this is going to be done straight out of Hungets. So we're going to be standing here. You're simply going to block. What I want for today is you can use pointy fingers. I'll give you a variation in a minute. So you're just going to step forward into Hangetsu. Right, you're going to make Ganambarai on the forward leg. So it's going to come in here. This feeling. And then what you're going to do is you're going to turn your hand, keep the elbow where it is, and just pull. We're going to have you uh, just pull it back. So it's going to go from shaman to hum. Right? Some variations of the kata switch it and do it the other way. Today, I want it this way. I want the opposite feeling, the opposite pull. Like you're pulling somebody behind you. Okay, so in the turn, it's just here, turn, what? Hand comes out and pull. In the expansion, the movement is not coming from my elbow, it's coming from my hip, pulling back. This remains, holy crap, look at that, one fist width off my body, right angle, seem, seem familiar? Just keep it there. Do you know what I mean? Then what's happening is it's your body that's making the action and not this. This doesn't work. This is weak. This is strong. Okay, so you're going to use the power of the inside tension, the stance, to make that drive. Right, ready? So from here, nice and relaxed. One first. Ready? Ish! And of course, I just did it the wrong way around. Let's go again. Small brain. Ish! Knee. Good, and up. Now from here, this side blocks. Ish! Knee, pull. Good. This side. Ish. Knee. Good. This side. Sam. She. Good. This side. Go. Rock. Good. This side. Blocking. Shish. Hatch. Again. This side. Ju. Ju. Good. And if you notice, as I go through, I told you to pull. I'm doing all sorts of just different variations, playing with the technique. These are things that you can try in your own time. For now, I want you with the same feeling. Hand, hand, then pull. Right? For today. For you all. For me, you'll notice sometimes I'm here, and then I'll pull in. Sometimes I'm here, and I pull back. Sometimes I'm here, and then there's a, a sort of in-between movement that I'm doing. I'm playing with just different variations. Ignore me. For you, boom, pull. Ready? Get on right. Ish. Knee. Sam. She. Go. Rock. Chish. Hatch. Chu. Ju. Ish. Knee. Good, and relax. Now, something that will help you, we'll do a slightly older variation on this kata. So instead of the push forward like get up, I want you to this time just turn over and expose this part of the hand. So remember I spoke about the um, get on my when you were doing it together like so, as that uppercut or drive, and this was sort of a punch. This time just change this turn <coughs> into taishul, this sort of pressing push. Boom! So you're hitting the person square in the hip, getting this action. Boom! And then this just pops straight up across the side of the neck. It hits them there. Boom! Here drops, hits. Then we're going to do the pull. Then you grab the neck, whatever, the, the lapel, pull back. That feeling. Does that make sense? So just change, just curve, curve the technique a little bit further than what you otherwise might. And then oh, this feeling. Does that make sense? And what you'll find is it'll be easier to connect this technique than the straight one. There's going to be a natural curve to the arm, right? It's very hard to sort of straighten it out. Just let it stay in that natural curve, curve in that natural bend. Boom. There. Then, wow, feel. Okay? Just for a few. Ready? Ish. Knee. Ish. Knee. Ish, knee, ish, oh, where am I, 
Here. Knee. Good. Ish. Knee. Ish. Good. Here. Knee. Ish. Knee. Back. Ish. Knee. Ish. Knee. Good. And relax. In case you're wondering what I'm doing with my different hip movements, there's multiple ways to break people's balance, right? One of them, of course, is forward, pull them back. Another is here, grab, pushing them from here, having this forward action on the hips, so pushing them forward, away from me. The other one, of course, is in the middle and just dropping down with them, right? So you can quite often break people's balance in any one of this, this, or this kind of action, right? And I'm just fiddling with all three for today. You just want the one. Just pull them this way. Okay? But all three work. Okay. Everyone good with that? Let's do the last one. So from here, all you're going to do is you're going to make it from here. Kolkutu. Itch! Now from here, it's going to be step, pull, kick, drop, punch up. So it's going to be a slightly different action from our just... So sort of step through, bang, bong, right, kind of hit. This time, what I want you to do is it's going to be here, each. Step across, two. Kick, drop, into Hangetsu. So feel this heaviness as it drops. Then rotate the hip, bang. Then rotate the hip, forward again. You should have room in the hip to allow that action. And remain in Hangetsu Dachi. Right, remain in the stance. It's just shifting forward. You've got the room because your legs are closer together, so you've got the room in the hip of being able to do this. Okay, so one more time. Itch, knee, san shigo, rok shich. Good, and up. Try again. Itch, knee, Sanji, kok Good, and up. Let's try the other side. Hey. Itch. Back stance. Knee step, pull. Sun kick, drop. She push, go up. Good, and up. Go back. Same side again. Itch. Knee step. Sun pull, push. She push, go up. Very good. Everyone good with it? Everyone good with the individual movements? Okay, so from here now, make it, make it rain, make it flow. So it's going to be here, one, then from here, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? Remain in stance. So if this is new to you, right? So Lena, you know, this might be new to you, right? Take it slow. Have the feeling of one, just take your time. Fluid is perfectly okay, right? But don't let yourself, this is back stance, this crosses, as soon as the kick goes with this heaviness, make sure it's down and into Hangetsu. Then push it up. Does that make sense? Because that's important, that's the important piece here. So you ready? From here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good, and switch. Itch, one, two, three, four, five, six. Good. Try again, other side. Itch, one, two, three, four, five, six. Good, and up. Try the other side. Itch. Knee. Good. Other side. Itch. Good. Other side. Hush. Good and relax. So what you have here is you have this idea again now from a stronger stance. Being able to simply be aggressive, be a little bit light, right? And be incredibly light, 
and then turn the tide. Does that make sense? You've got these abilities.